Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Michelle, for that kind introduction. And I'm thrilled to be with you and so proud of what you all have accomplished these last three days. Uh, I also want to recognize my colleague, Maria Kozlowski, who leads the Rockefeller Foundation's work in innovative finance, uh, including our partnerships with many of you. And I'm thrilled that Maria is here with us uh, today. You know, it is really good to be with you because you have shown that your commitment to using capitalism, using investment, using impact investment, and using your values all together can genuinely be transformational. You're making big bets every day. And in fact, we need your big bets today more than ever. If you look at the nature and the condition of our domestic economy, we are in the midst of a once in a generation, maybe once in multiple generation, public investments through the Inflation Reduction Act, the infrastructure bill, in reshaping our economy. And whether that reshaping of our economy ends up building a more inclusive and a more just and a more broadly based economy, or ends up reinforcing the trends of the last four decades of narrowing the size of our middle class and expanding the size of those who are at the top and the bottom of our economy is up to whether or not your big bets succeed. On a global basis, the condition is perhaps even more dire and consequential. There are 50 or 60 economies teetering on the edge of a debt crisis. I was just in Kenya, where 60 cents on every dollar of public tax revenue is spent on interest payments that go out of the country. And in that context, these nations have to deal with the reality that we are going backwards for the first time, the first three-year period in our uh, post-2000 history on the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. The goals sound sometimes complicated and they sound sometimes fanciful, but ultimately they're pretty basic. It's a simple idea that everyone everywhere deserves to have some dignity, some opportunity, and the capacity to do something purposeful with their lives. And we're going backwards on the indicators because of the macro environment. So I think the net effect of those realities is that we are not currently building an inclusive economy fast enough at home or around the world. We see that in statistic after statistic that I won't get into. So the question is, what can we do about it? And the reason I'm so excited to be in this room with you is you're already doing it. You're showing that we can take risks with our capital, you're showing we can take risks with our capitalism. You're showing we can take risks with our ideas in order to build a better society. I recently wrote a book called Big Bets that is about taking those risks. And I very much hope that book, which describes efforts that range from global vaccination, initially uh, instigated in part by leadership from Bill and Melinda Gates in, 2020, in, two, in the year 2000, to more recent examples of fighting hunger and pandemics under public, the public administration of President Obama's, to some of the work the Rockefeller Foundation is now doing in energy and did domestically in the United States on testing in COVID. In all of those examples, the book tries to pull out a set of practical actions that make it possible for us together to make a difference at a much greater level of scale. And I, too, like you, see the news every day that sometimes uh, makes you feel like, gosh, it's a complex, difficult, and unfortunate world out there. But because I've been exposed to you and your work, and because I've been exposed to the examples I just described, I know it's realistic to be optimistic about our future. So I want to take a moment and just describe three big bets we're making at the Rockefeller Foundation right now in the spirit of this outstanding SOCAP gathering. The first is the Economic Opportunity Coalition, an effort launched in part uh, with Vice President Kamala Harris a few years ago. It's a historic public-private philanthropic collaboration designed to bring together partners, and I won't list all the partners because there are too many to name, but from banking and technology to financial transactions and, and, um, and the public sector, these partners, private sector partners, have come together to secure 
more than $1 billion in commitments in just the last year for community lenders nationwide. They're already helping 5 million small businesses access capital, go digital, and grow their networks with a focus on women and uh, companies that have entrepreneurs of color. They've launched programs to connect students, and students of color in particular, to tens of thousands of new high-paying jobs. And just today, the EOC announced two new efforts to build wealth in underserved communities. First, an effort to reach $3 billion in committed deposits from the nation's largest corporations for community lenders, community development financial institutions. The second is a call to all companies to invest more in the technology sector, semiconductors, clean energy, batteries, heavy industry, in a way that will strengthen our domestic supply chains, but also create opportunities for minority-led businesses that are otherwise undercapitalized and left out. The second big bet is a program called Invest in Our Future. Invest in Our Future is an effort to recognize that between the Inflation Reduction Act, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, and the Chips and Science Act, we are experiencing a once-in-a-generation opportunity to reshape our economy. There's $3 trillion of public and private investments in those three pieces of legislation taken together. But being honest, most of those benefits are going to go to places that already have growth, already have jobs, already have technology, and already have capital. So Invest in Our Future is a collaboration between the Rockefeller, Hewlett, MacArthur, and Packard Foundations that have come together with initial commitments of $60 million over three years to help all communities access the benefits of those pieces of legislation. In fact, just tomorrow I'll be visiting an electric vehicle plant in uh, the southern part of California to, to understand the new community benefits agreements that have been negotiated by a group called Jobs to Move America, which helps make sure that these investments in these technology companies are creating jobs that are fair and equitable and accessible to everyone in our country. The program is also making a new investment, and I'm pleased to announce, a million-dollar commitment to Elemental Accelerator. Elemental is doing exactly the types of things you all have been talking about these last few days, investing in companies like Dollar Ride, an app-based rideshare option for the millions of Americans who aren't adequately served by public transport and who find taxis, Ubers, and Lyfts too costly for their daily needs. Dollar Ride and its electric fleet will serve areas in New York City that have limited public transit, unlocking $27 million in financing and serving up to 600,000 customers. We're excited to make this initial million-dollar grant to this organization, but we hope they will accelerate that and raise as much as 10 times more for those types of projects. Third, and most globally relevant, our foundation has made a $500 million grant uh, two years ago to create a program called the Global Energy Alliance for People and Planet. Because it is finally true, after many, many years, that the renewable energy technology frontier is offering up the technologies and the business models that can reach the billion people on this planet that are trapped in extreme poverty because they still effectively live in the dark. And that $500 million unlocked a billion dollars of other philanthropic commitments from the Bezos Earth Fund and the IKEA Foundation. That billion and a half unlocked another $10 billion from development finance institutions and multilateral development banks. And we're going into this year's COP hoping that our collection of about $11.5 billion will unlock far more private capital to accelerate programs that are already reaching nearly 20 million people in almost 22 countries around the world and that have tremendous capacity to scale if only they had the resources and the risk capital to do so. So I invite all of you to be a part of our Global Energy Alliance, whether you have capital to put in some form of the risk stack or whether you're a technology operator that has a solution that can make the world a better place. I will conclude with just, say, uh, with just a tremendous thank you to all of you. You've demonstrated your innovative thinkers. You've demonstrated your risk takers, and you've demonstrated you care about making the world a better place. You're the reason I wrote the book, because I feel like if my kids get to see the energy, the values, and the persistence each of you brings to this mission every single day, then instead of being cynical because of all the news they consume, they can be optimistic about the future and inspired 
to shape it. Thank you.